still going to be paying $300 million a year back on those bonds. You know why I think this happens? I don't think most people know what a bond is. Explain what a bond is. People think somehow, miraculously, when you give your money to the government, they multiply it and give it back to you in some way. Well, that's what they tell you on the TV commercials all the time, <laughs> is that it doesn't raise taxes. You pay for this bond and it doesn't raise taxes. Well, it comes out of the general fund, and then, of course, since they don't have money for other government programs, they have to raise taxes to pay for the bonds. Mm -hmm. the, um, so what they do is they borrow the money and then they pay it back with interest over a 20-year lifespan. And that was, of course, another one of the, the capital ventures were another big supporters of Proposition 71. And what it started out was is that somebody decided, okay, well, we're going to have this proposition and we're going to get a well, big amount of money. Let's see, let's go $900 million. <laughs> Well, then they said, well, you know what? $900 million sounds like a lot of money. Let's just make it a billion. <laughs> because most people don't know the difference between a billion and a million, and it's only one billion. And then um, and they were trying to pass this. They were trying to get it on the ballot through the legislature. And then so somebody else got a hold of it and said, you know, instead of one billion, let's make it two. And then somebody, oh, let's make it three. You know, it's only three. And so they, they made it three. I mean, they were just pulling these numbers out of, out of thin air. Uh -huh. And, of course, the higher the number was, the more people that they would get, more of these venture capitalists and biotech companies that would fund the uh, the campaign for Proposition 71. And there was no opposition. Uh -huh. You had some Christian conservatives opposing just the fact of, of stem cell research and right. amniotic stem cell research. Which doesn't really fly in California. Yeah, and, and that, that was nothing. And, and every time that the media would have a debate on it, it would be pro-life versus pro-choice, which was a, was, was a bogus argument. And it should have been fiscally irresponsibly <laughs> to give money to these billionaires right <laughs> when in a time that that uh, we had difficult uh, fiscal problems in the state of California and then there's an expectation that these people who are the recipients of this grand uh, corporate welfare package are going to give to the campaigns of the politicians well, of are course. going to give money to probably both the Democratic and Republican Party. Whatever serves their interest. Yeah. Has Schwarzenegger done anything right by your mind? I mean, has he done anything that you can point to and say, okay, this is acceptable? He has tried. Like, for example, pension reform. He, what he did is he was going to try to have an election this November, a special election, and he was going to try to to uh, change some things. Now, the pension reform was actually written up by the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. Uh -huh. For my, my probably is okay. It was. It was great. But in it, in their plan, they didn't specifically say that people, um, uh, that survivors of firefighters and police officers that are currently getting these pensions would continue getting them. Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah, it, it didn't. It didn't say that the Easter Bunny was make believe either, but it it, um, it did nothing to take these pensions away from those people. But the opposition used that. They would they would enter. You know, they would they would bring up these these widows, and saying, you know, you can't do this. This is going to be terrible. You know, because they would make them believe that this was, was actually changing. But, uh -huh. but th there was nothing in the proposition that would do that. Uh huh. And. So but because of the, the intensive media campaign against it, instead of coming out and saying, look, this does not take the money away from these widows. Mm -hmm. There's n there is nothing in here that takes that money away. And be forceful about it and, and, and take and take that argument to the people. Instead, Arnold said, okay, we'll put that one on the shelf. We won't do it. And that was the most important legislation that was right. going to be on the ballot in, in uh, November. Because that is what's draining the economy in California is this, is the pension, the uh, Calpers is it's a huge um, billion, billions of dollars that they have in, in Calpers, which is the retirement accounts for public employees in California, mm -hmm. and they used to fund their own pensions. Well, during that year when they were really flush in money, a lot of money was coming in. They um, they increased their pensions, saying, look, we, we don't have a problem because stock, the stock market is just booming and that's where we have all our money in, so we can increase these pensions. And that's what they did, but they couldn't fund it because the stock market went stagnant, and uh, so th their projections uh, will not fund these pensions, so now it's up to the taxpayers to fund them. 
and they have uh, so many public employees in the state of California that can get 90% of their pay at age 50. Wow. So, and this is a huge amount of money. Some of these people are making even oh, their pensions. I hear, I know no one's going to believe me, but r librarians retire as millionaires in California. I know no one's going to believe me, but it's actually true. They get huge amounts of money in pensions. And it's, it's a monstrous amount of money, and there's no way for us to pay it. But nothing's been done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like like the the widow of uh, Sheriff Block. Mm -hmm. She was able to get a pension that uh, he was he died in the line of duty. Uh huh. Well, he was very old. He was. I mean, he, I've met him before, and he was actually feeble for the last probably four or five years of his term. Mm -hmm. uh, he d didn't really know where he was at. Um, he really couldn't function. He was dying, you know, a slow, natural death of old right. age. He was very old. And um, but she's able to receive about three hundred thousand dollars in pension. Wow! Um, you know, just work in the system, and that's what a lot of a lot of the public employees will do. Is that they will go out on stress leave uh, prior to their retirements, so they can help, uh, that'll help spike their retirements. Right. Almost all firefighters do that in upper management right now. Is they they go out on the stress leave before they retire. And they're they're pulling in these pensions of like one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. Wow! For so, not working. So, so they're retiring, and I understand they're retiring on some of the people are retiring on ninety percent of their income, 90%. things like that, eighty percent of their income. So they're basically we're 90, paying them the same thing. Ninety percent at, uh, at fifty years, and and if they retire with disability, the part of the, the money that they're coming in on disability is not taxed. Mm -hmm. So actually, their take-home income can actually be greater by not working. Wow. So yeah, we have tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people that we pay for in California not to work. And, uh, and so we definitely needed pension reform. And unfortunately, Arnold would not um, stand Push up to, to the, well, he wouldn't stand up and support it when he said he would. And he just left uh, the Howard Jarvis Taxpayer Association high and dry on that issue. So the governor, in theory, could, with this one issue alone, completely change the California economy. It would certainly help. And there's other issues too. Is the uh, the Paycheck uh, Protection Act? Hopefully, that'll get on the ballot. And what that does is is it says that the the unions must have your written permission to use your union dues for political activities. Mm -hmm. See, that's how the unions get to be so powerful in the state of California. Is that they force their members. You have to join the union. You have to pay the union dues. And when something comes up, I mean, the, the union dues have dramatically increased recently for teachers because they wanted to go out and with all these advertisements against the governor's plans on changing that, where the, the actual employee can say, look, I don't want my dues going into that. You, you have to get the written permission of that employee to be able to use those dues. And uh, so the unions are fighting that one really hard because that would take a lot of their power away. Is that going to be on the ballot, or is this? A, they're trying to get it on the ballot in November. Yes. So Arnold's been kind of not supporting the right things, and he seems to have the power, at least for a while. There, he seemed to have the power of Hollywood behind him, with that Hollywood charisma behind him, where he went out mm -hmm. and was able to speak out for or against something and and sway a large number of people. I think that. Yeah, you know, he's a public relations kind of guy. I mean, he likes getting on TV and stuff like that, but I don't think he actually ever gets in there and actually reads the text of these bills that he's proposing or the, these initiatives, uh, like Proposition, Proposition 66. He's just going by what his people are telling him. It was a complete fabrication on, on what he actually went there on camera and uh, sent out all over the state of California that these... 20,000 prisoners were going to be put out in the street, the violent criminals. Well, it simply would not do that. You know, he, he, I don't think he meant to lie, but he, he was told to do this. It was just, it was like um, when, they, when Jesse Ventura became the governor of, of Minnesota. That was a great thing. Here is a guy that took the, the Nolan quiz, which I think is available on WP.org, um, and scored a perfect 100-100 in the Libertarian Quadrant, uh -huh. Jesse Ventura. Well, he didn't have libertarians in his administration. Right. He had DFL people, which is the Democratic Party in Minnesota, running his administration. So they ran it just like a Democratic governor would. Mm -hmm. uh, he, even though he talked about cutting spending, cutting taxes, all these things that he was going to do, 
spending increased, taxes increased, everything, 